I oh, better get those feet tapping, fingers snapping, all hands clapping. Buckle up, gobble some popcorn. It's the Mickle Pot and Pickle with Mickle. And here we go. Tiger, Tiger Woods, y'all. Not only is that one of cinema's all timers delivered flawlessly by Chris Rock. It's true. He's back. Tiger has been seen at the Genesis Invitational. Perfect timing for a PGA Tour showcase event. And the absence of defending champion, John Rahm, who, as we know, is riding with the boys on the 54 Tour. It is a feel-good free-for-all Friday. I am Micklemore. How the hell are you? No one put baby in a corner, and you will not be alone either. Not today, when you eat. Today is National No One Eats Alone Day. You should also do your best to do a grouch a favor today. Which Oscar is your favorite grouch? Who will be thanking the Academy this year round? Will you watch the Oscars? I know it has become a thing of its own. It's one of those events. Though the show is usually a bore. Unless you get a slap or something fun. Movies are fun. Have you seen the major nominees this year. You've got time. At this time of the year, we begin to trudge through the sludge of the sports year. That is not to say there will not be amazing moments. There will be. There will just be no football. Other than speculation and wild proclamations about this new coach and this player in the draft and what your team's going to do and how it's going to pan out this time next year, who's holding the trophy? The symbiotic relationship of sports and entertainment is a good one. I stand by this statement. The Usher halftime experience was not good. I stand by that statement as well. What is good is to know that, before you know it, you will be at that Oscar party dressed up like freaking Ryan Gosling from Barbie or your best Oppenheimer, all the while patiently waiting for those brackets to come out and the next week when March Madness descends upon us all. Clark Griswold said it best, nothing worthwhile is easy, so we must be patient. There's plenty going on right now in the sports verse to keep us engaged. We will get there first on this day. There are some interesting things shared however you want to look at it, whatever your perspective might be. We like to think and laugh and cry. We know that that makes for a full day. They say that things happen in threes, and yes, they say a lot of things. On this fine day, February 16th, in 1941, Kim Jong-2 was born. In 1959, Fidel Castro took power in Cuba, and John McEnroe was born. We just saw Johnny Mac footfalling his way to glory at Pickle Slam 2, and we will be on the court today as PPA makes its way back here to Mesa next week. I plan on touching all the bases today. And if you touch your face, do you call that a beard? Get to Valhalla Beard and Body.net. Use my promo code MIC15. The finest oils and waxes for your beard and stash, soaps for your body and face. Check it out today. Use my promo code MIC15 at Valhalla Beard and Ambody.net. Course to courts, away we go after this. The Mickle Pod and Pickle with Mickle is all new, twice a week, all major podcast apps. Earbuds in, podcorn ready, it's back to the show. Does it really even matter if Tiger gets into contention or plays the weekend? Tiger still moves the needle in golf, in sports, period. He hosts the tournament, Genesis Invitational, played at Riviera Riviera Country Club, where, interestingly enough, Tiger's never won 
an event at Riviera. With the scuffling still within the ropes about the 54 Tour and PGA, the PIF, and the hangover from Phoenix, Tiger brings a collective smile to the whole damn thing, no matter how you feel about him. In golf and sports, Eldrick matters. Speaking about the tour, oil, money, and the future, Tiger, who does hold a position on the uh, tour policy board, he gave a very Tiger-botic answer, meaning to say he said nothing at all. Reports are that wagers are up with Tiger in the field, but you know, can his back hold up? It's on to Augusta. Will we see Tiger able to compete, not complete, at the Masters this year. Can you imagine waking up Masters Sunday, waiting to see Tiger in his Sunday red with a chance to get that green jacket? In my opinion, it's the Masters. It is only the Masters now where he stands a chance to continue to get majors. I mean, when's the next time the Open Championship comes back to St. Andrews? I don't think he'll be able to compete for the title at that point. You can wear your Sunday red now, too. That's the big news out there at the Genesis. Tiger's Sunday red collection, it's now out. And it's pretty cool. It's got a tiger on it for the logo. It's got 15 stripes, right? You can get this stuff. It's got hoodies, shirts, whatever the hell else Tiger and Taylor made uh, want to put on you know, this new logo. It's pretty cool. Sunday red, three words, tiger logo, 15 stripes. You know, Now, I mentioned earlier, Genesis Invitational, it's one of the marquee events for the PGA Tour this year, which means the prize money is big, the field is stacked with big names. And if the golf can compare to the golf last weekend, you know, that finish in Phoenix was pretty good. If we can have that, minus some overzealous, boisterous fans, then golf is off to a big start heading towards the first major of the year, and golf needs it. Now, major would have been LeBron James going to the Warriors. Can you imagine that? Imagine we take a quick glance into the NBA. The tread deadline has passed. It is All-Star Weekend. I mean, Indianapolis gets to host the All-Stars this time around. I can remember when you wanted to watch the All-Star Weekend, if only to see the dunk contest, maybe the three-point you know, shoot off. I still don't know what the in-season tournament means in the NBA. I think the Lakers won it. I know that while the Spurs are at the bottom of the Western Conference, this Wemby kid, uh, he's looking pretty good. He's looking like he's going to fit the bill. I know it's year one. He's doing some pretty cool things. I don't think I've seen him play a whole game. I don't think you have to because you can see highlights of this guy everywhere. And well, let's give him some more time. But as I said, the Wemby kid, Looking pretty good. It's the halfway mark. I want to stay just on the overall picture in the NBA. There's still a lot of hoops to be decided. You know, there's East, there's West. Familiar names. Do we see any sleepers at this point in the season? Let's start over in the East. Will Farrell may have gotten Nick's fever in the other guys. I'm not buying it. Can the Pacers keep that pace? Will things just fall off in Philly? I'm thinking they will. Embiid's going to be, he's going to be out longer than people think. And what you're starting to see with Joel Embiid is what we feared. He gets hurt too much. Cleveland has been the talk of the town. Which Florida team do you fear? Which team down there would you rather not face down the stretch? Magic or Heat? In the West, Minnesota? Minnesota is howling atop the conference. Did I see that right? Oklahoma City, one of my favorite places, even if I've never been there, they're rolling. Clippers are like the Knicks. Yup, New York. I said it. My sons. Will the sons come out in the second half? I mean, all three of them. Booker, Beal, Durant for an extended stretch. Need all three of them on the court together. A few games in a row. Get the rhythm for this stretch run. How about the King of the Kings? Give me a sack town run. LeBron didn't really add much to his roster. I mean, who's he going to take with him to Seattle next year? I mean, I don't even know if that's going to happen anymore. I want it to happen. LeBron, go to Seattle. Over by the Bay, let me just say, they will find a way. And that is my look on the NBA hardwood in college hoops. Just wait for the brackets, baby. That's what it's all about. March Madness right now. The wait is over. It is that time. Paddles up.
Watch those feet at the kitchen line. The dinking, smashing, third shot, dropping, got pickleball fever, and it's not stopping this pickle and nicker. Pickle and nicker. Pickle and nickel, all right. All right, the fastest growing sport is really showing no signs of slowing down. I mean, there is activity almost anywhere you look in the Pickleverse. Keep it right here and stay in the know. On the court later today, the Pickle with Mickle interview series continues. I'm back in OKC. I'll be joined by Carol Rolls, owner of the NPL's Oklahoma City Punishers, and Jenna Hessert, who will tell us all about the OPPL, Oklahoma City Premier Pickleball League. PPA, APP, NPL, OPPL, AZPBL, Senior Pro Tour. I mean, just a few right here in the good old USA. Pickleball's reach is worldwide and pickle gating is going right along with it. Go to the MicklePod.com. Grab a pickle gating t-shirt. Support the movement. Now, you can wear those shirts next week right out here if you're going to be here at the Mesa Cup. Remember, if you go out there for early action, layer up. It's February February in the desert. You have been warned. This weekend, APP Next Gen San Antonio is taking place. And don't you love this? On Valentine's Day, the APP announced its partnership with Owl Paddle. The Owl Paddle is designed to reduce noise. That's their claim to fame by 50%, though it couldn't quiet down Johnny Mac during Pickle Slam 2. McEnroe was using the Owl Paddle during that event. I have not seen uh, an influx of noise reduction paddles from, let's just say, the other major paddle players. I'm sure that has to be coming. Now, keep an eye out down there in San Antonio for Jack Jr. Mint Monroe. It's cool. To get him back here on the show, I'd like to do that, to talk with him more about Longhorn Pickleball Club. Reason being, that's an area I want to focus this year, the growth of pickleball across campus all over the country. Just this week, we had a group of high school tennis players down at the courts with us, and they were playing pickleball. Some of them were seniors. I asked, is there a pickleball club at the school yet? Could there be a pickleball team in the future? And the response was not yet. Valentine's Day just passed and the country is still in a love affair with pickleball. How long it lasts, we will see. And you know, by this, and that's not to say pickleball is going away. Trust me, I don't think pickleball is going away. What I'm talking about is this tech stock effect of everyone running out, trying to start up a pickleball company, trying to cash in on the phenomenon that is pickleball. I believe the cool-off will happen. I believe there will be an aftershock felt across the pickle verse. I mean, from paddles to apparel to other pickle equipment, you can't sustain these price points. At least they don't seem sustainable to me. Overall, how the sport, how these tours, how the local opportunities for you to play and compete, even at that non-pro level, how they continue to keep this in our face and at the pro level, in a way we can consume, and then build up allegiances to players and teams and those rivalries, right? I mean, I think that's what matters when you're really trying to develop a sport and capture a fan base. Yeah, And that being said, when when is the next MLP event? Uh Uh-huh. Right here in the Valley, there is almost always some sort of tournament, if not a major tour, coming through. I mean, come down to Gilbert Regional Park, this weekend, come down tomorrow, Saturday the 17th. Center Court Pickleball is putting on a cool event. We're going to be down there like all day. If you get there at the right time, you might see me play. You might see me in action. I'm playing a little tournament down there. And like I said, a big theme of this show, laugh, think, cry. You want to do that every day? Watching me play pickleball? You just might get the hat trick. Look, I'm on my way to 4.0 and right now, We are on our way off the court because we still have Football Friday. I 
I need that ball. Get me the ball. You need the ball. Get me the ball. Get you the ball. Are you going to get me the oh, ball? I'll get you the ball. In the wake of the senseless tragedy in Kansas City, let's take a moment of silence and offer thoughts and prayers to all of those affected. Not a full week removed from a Super Bowl that took overtime to finish, and there is no time like the present to break down the after effects of the game. It is felt NFL wide, not just amongst the Chiefs, the Champs, and the Chumps. You like that? Let me stay with the Niners. D coordinator out. See a Wilkes. Okay, make a statement. Let me play with the twos. In the National Football League, there are two primary Shanahan's, Mike and Kyle. Mike won two Lombardi trophies with the Broncos. Kyle has been to two Super Bowls. Two Super Bowls have gone to overtime. Kyle was in both. Two times, Kyle has coached teams with a lead in the Super Bowl and two times fell short. Garoppolo, Lance, two QBs. Garoppolo was brought in, seen as a perfect fit for Shanahan did well, except Garoppolo got broken. He gets hurt a lot. He did get to a Super Bowl. He gets moved out in favor of Lance, who gets broken, yet hadn't even proved he could do it. And Lance was Shanahan's move all the way. Two years of Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, which have been pretty darn good. Now, he also got broken. He also has made a Super Bowl. What do you do in Santa Clara? There is talent on the roster and unrest in the stadium. The fans are murmuring. Does a coach, follow me here, who has averaged nine wins, is hailed as a genius who has not delivered the ultimate prize, despite being right there, continue to run the show? Can the team afford to let him go? In this day and age when nine wins has kept Mike Tomlin in Pittsburgh for like 30 years. It hasn't been 30 years, but it's been a long time. Okay? And Shanahan's gotten to two Super Bowls. Now, what about Mr. Lynch? Now, is he vice president of operations and general manager now? Now, he was brought in there also as some sort of a general managerial genius to right the ship in San Francisco and get him that sixth ring. They haven't gotten it yet. Will they continue? To trust the irrelevant QB, who this offseason might be the most relevant piece of a team. Not necessarily the Niners puzzle. That's two questions, maybe a few more than two, to think about. There will be a lot to think about as we trudge through the sludge of the sports year, and I am happy we will do it again together. So off you go into the weekend. Get out and play some pickleball. You just might like it. If you like great interviews, don't miss any of the Pickle with Nickel interview series. Another on tap for today. Listen to the show on all major podcast apps. The Mickle Pod is also on YouTube at The Mickle Pod. Get those pickle gating shirts at themicklepod.com. Whatever you do this weekend, stay safe and stay hydrated. I'll see all y'all right here next time for more.